Um, it's been a great pleasure for me to be here, and thanks to Morgan and Wealth Foundation for getting me here with you and um, to share with you this, uh, the story of this small Asian wildcat all the way from Thailand. First of all, um, I'm quite surprised to see there are more people, like Morgan said, who know about fishing cats uh, or who have heard about fishing cats. Um, and a lot of the times when I talk with people, they always think I'm talking about fish or cat or catfish. So yeah, it is fishing cat. It's a cat like tiger and leopard. And um, um, fishing cat is about double the size of a, a house cat. And they love water, like their name. Um, they like to swim in water, unlike a lot of cats who don't like to be in the water. And um, they mostly occur in wetland areas in Asia, and um, especially on, along the coast in Thailand. Uh, the main prey is fish, of course, but they also eat a lot of rodents, uh, like field rodents, and uh, a lot of birds, and some other uh, animals that they can catch as well. So they're quite opportunist um, animals. They also eat crab um, and also snakes. Um, and uh, because they like water and they're perfectly adapted to be to live around watery area like wetland area, um, rivers and um, creeks and stuff. So um, and a lot of these areas in Asia have been taken over by humans. So um, they're you know they're facing a lot of challenges. Um, in Thailand, uh, fishing cats have been found in a few areas along the coast. And um, here is where we found a good number of fishing cats. Um, and it's a little bit south of our capital city, um, Bangkok. It's about three hours drive down. And um, there, the place is called Samrayat, uh, Samrayat Wetland Area, which is in Pachuap Kiri Khan province. Um, people living there are mostly farmers, like shrimp farmers, um, fish farmers, and some are rice farmers. Oops. Samrayat is a wetland area, and historically it's, it's a huge wetland area, but about 80 years ago people have moved into this area and converted a big chunk of it into um, agricultural area. So right now it's, a, it's like a mosaic of uh, wetland, agricultural area, and, um, and uh, limestone mountains, which is on the closer to the coast, closer to the ocean. Um, part of this wetland is in a national park called Khao Sam Rayad. And uh, Kaul, Kaul, the word Kaul means mountain in Thai. And uh, Kaul Samrayat means the mountain of 300 peaks. And uh, all of this limestone mountain is in Kaul Samrayat uh, National Park. And uh, part of this wetland is in the National Park as well. So here's where we find fishing cats. Um, part in the wetland area, uh, which is um, the areas that's not been flooded or um, the areas that expose when the water um, it's dry out during the dry season. And that's my assistant who I hired from the local. We also find them in fallow and farmed lands. And um, um, range-wide fishing cats are found also in South Asia in countries like uh, Pakistan in India, um, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. Um, and for Southeast Asia, for the last 10 years, uh, last 20 years, uh, fishing cats have been found and um, recorded only in Thailand and Cambodia. But historically, uh, historically they've been found also, oops, sorry. Hello? They were also found historically in, you know, in Myanmar, in, um, in Laos, and in Vietnam, but now only in Thailand and Cambodia. The recent reassessment of fishing cat population throughout their range um, says that there is little less than 2,000 of them left 
in the, whole, in the wild. And um, they are listed on the IUCN red list as endangered and also on the appendix, um, uh, the uh, scientist appendix two. They're also listed as uh, protected species in Thailand. One of the main threats uh, that the fishing cats are facing is losing the habitat. A lot of these areas have been converted, um, degraded, and changed so much for human use. A lot of it's for shrimp farming, especially along the coast. It looks like this. Every three months, the water will get pumped out of uh, shrimp ponds into the surrounding areas like this. And this is wastewater from the shrimp pond, what's left over. And for commercial shrimp farming, which is, you know, they harvest it every, every three months, the people use a lot of chemicals to treat the water and a lot of um, antibiotics to keep the shrimps alive. So every three months, the water would get pumped out uh, of, the, uh, of the shrimp pond into the areas like this, and that cause a lot of issues to the uh, natural surroundings. People harvesting the shrimp after the water is pumped out. Another main threat is the killing. People, um, fishing cats are killed for uh, various reasons. Uh, one of it is people eat their meat. It's not the source, it's not as the source of protein, but it's delicacy. Some people just like to go after fishing cats for their meat. And another killing is um, for um, retribution because uh, people think that fishing cats steal their chickens and steal or, or raid their fish traps. And another issue um, uh, is when people have high value um, animals like this, fighting cocks, which cost a lot of money. And um, when a fishing cat goes and steals a, uh, a fighting cock, people get really ang angry and want to go out and kill fishing cats. So uh, for fighting cocks, the value for fighting cocks starts from $35 up to $3,500. So you can see how people get so angry. But it's not always the fishing cats that steal these chickens, you know. Um, they're also um, feral dogs and feral cats as well. So it only took me a little bit, 10 years, to find these cats, to learn about these cats. And the first three years is nothing. I found nothing at all because I was looking for them in, in different places. I was told to go to more protected area and not in a more like a, um, human dominated landscape. So I found nothing for the first three years. And then the fourth year, I found a small population down in the peninsula, but I couldn't get enough funding to uh, work on that population because people think it's too unviable population and it's gonna go extinct very soon. So I couldn't work on that population, so I had to look for another population. So, and then I came across this um, population in Khao Sam Rayot area. So that was five years ago. So I went out and hired this person who's from the local, and uh, he helped me. He took me out into the area, and we went out into the wetland looking for fishing cat signs like this. This is what I'm talking about when we go out in the wetland looking for dry parts like this to find their tracks. We also look for them in farmed lands and behind somebody's backyards. We go wherever we can find their tracks. We use common methods to track these cats. We use sign surveys, and we also use camera trap surveys. And this is a picture of one of the uh, fishing cats that we captured through camera trap. His name is Kai Tun. And I'm going to tell you a little bit why, um, how and how he got his name. Kai Tun in Thai means steamed egg. 
And uh, for, for Thai, you know, uh, steamed eggs like a nickname, and people think it's a cute name for, for pet or for cat, so they named him um, steamed egg. We ask people, when we, we get a picture of a fishing cat, we ask people to name, to help us name the cat so that they become attached to the cat. Okay, um, I think I'm running over a little bit of time here. So there are a couple of actions that um, we need, um, and um, that the immediate need is to protect the cats, and um, that is to stop the killing, and the second is to maintain or restore their habitat. And this is a picture of uh, one of the villagers who think that if we help plan help plant some, um, some vegetation in the wetland area that will bring back the fish stock and also bring back the food for the fishing cat and for themselves as well. And this is the kind of habitat of the, for the fishing cat that we want to protect. Um, there are approaches that I come up with to uh, accomplish our goals. And for my own personal uh, approach to obtain any data on the fishing cat is to get local people involved, kids, adults, farm owners, and they help us. This is a picture of people helping us capture and, and sedate the cat so we could, can put uh, radio collars on so we can follow them. Kids learning how to use uh, techniques to, um, to locate the cat, reading maps, using GPS and triangulation technique to uh, locate a location of the cat, and get them excited and interested in fishing cats, and showing pictures to kids. And then we go out and show our, what we find uh, to the community. So all those approaches are to get people emotionally um, engaged, involved, and attached. And we want them to feel the loss when a fishing cat is killed, to feel the loss when the uh, home of the fishing cat is destroyed. And this is a message sending from the community and some of our fishing cats. We need help uh, for these cats to survive and to thrive in this landscape. We need to buy back some of the land so we can save, save these cats. Otherwise, they would not have a chance to survive in this landscape for the next 15 years. Thank you.